Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMore from the End Times Research Ministry and coming to you today on November the 24th in 2014. Now, in many of my posts that I put at my website, I put up YouTube videos. And in a lot of those YouTube videos, I give you warnings. And also in a lot of my YouTube videos, when something happens, I'll take you back showing you some of my previous posts and my previous videos showing you what I said was going to happen in the future based on what I know from the Bible. You can see the events taking place currently. You can look at what the Lord told us is going to happen. You put them together and you can figure out the direction that we're going and it's the direction to fulfill Bible prophecy. And so it becomes very, very important for people to understand these things because these are the things that the Lord warned us so many years before they actually took place. And so I wanted to again to go through some of this information that I just got today so that you can see that my warnings about what's happening now currently concerning Iran obviously and the United States and Israel and the nuclear quest of Iran to get that bomb very, very important information. So I want to show you some of my information from the past and then show you the current information. But before I go there, I want to present something to you that I think is really important. And when you go over, if you want to take a look at the news today, just go over. I'll have this up at my website. I'll put the link up there. And the article is entitled, An Op-Ed, Once Again, the Temple Mount is in the Heart of the Matter. And this article is from Jerusalem. It's out of Israel, obviously. And it talks about the major problem taking place right now in current events between most of the world, especially the Islamic world, and the Temple Mount area that Israel has possession of. They took possession of this in 1967. They actually own it, but they're allowing the Arabs, specifically Jordan, to do the daily operations. But now, because of the events that are taking place, and we see more Knesset members being elected that are pushing for full access to the Temple Mount and saying that they want another temple rebuilt. Now, of course, this is the temple that Jesus talked about. So it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But in this article today that I gave you the headline, please read that article. I'm not going to read the whole article. It's fairly long, but it's very, very important because it's what I told you about three weeks ago. And you go through my videos, you'll see my warning. I said, you will see the heart of the matter is going to be the Temple Mount area. I give you two other areas. The peace talks are failing and we have construction in Israel and specifically in East Jerusalem. Because these are the things that made the peace process fail. And of course, just take a look at Thessalonians because it said that there's going to be sudden destruction all right, when they're calling for peace and safety. So we're headed right down the alley where the Lord showed us that we'd be going. Now, there's some other news that just took place on November the 24th of 2014 as well, keeping in tune with what's going on at the Temple Mount. And this one came from IsraelNationalNews.com on the 24th with the headline, 600 face rain, cold, security hazards for annual march around the Temple Mount. It says, despite the inclement weather, 600 Jews comprised of young and old men and women showed up last night, Sunday, for the traditional march around the gates of the Temple Mount. Neither safety considerations, the Jerusalem cold, nor the wet, dampened spirits as the circuit was made, or stopped the spontaneous outbreaks of singing and dancing. Prayers, too, were offered for a complete and speedy recovery of Yoda Glick, who was targeted in a terrorist attack a few weeks ago and critically wounded by a would-be assassin's bullet. And again, I'm going to have the link to this article at my site as well. But fuel adding. Now, what I mean by fuel is, well, the Arabs know what's going on. They know that in 2014 there was more activity, 
more pressure trying to get the Jews to have full access and more talk about the third temple being built and so that is kindling wood on an already uh, burning fire and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and in 2015 you're going to hear a lot more news I can promise you that about the Temple Mount and you're going to see more conflicts between the Israelis and the Palestinians concerning this Temple Mount it has to go that way and I'll tell you why is because if the Lord is the true Lord, and I know that He is, and His Word says that all these things have to be taking place in one generation, as we see Him say in Matthew chapter 24, when He says, When you shall see all these things, know that it's near, even at the doors. And then He tells us that this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. So, I've said it a thousand times, that we are the only generation to see all these things take place. So, if you're reading the scriptures where he talks about the third temple is going to be rebuilt, then you know that if the temple is going to be built, they're going to be praying there. It only makes sense. Put two to two together. And they will be going up. Now, little by little, they're getting the right people in place to make the laws and enforce the laws so that the Israelis can go up just like the Arabs and go up and pray. Now, there's a lot of people who think that, well, maybe there's a possibility that a huge quake will take out the Dome of the Rock, the al Ask Mosque, and Israel could do at that point whatever they want to do with the Temple Mount. Well, two things to consider. Number one, the Arabs will probably think that it was a terrorist attack by somebody within Israel to get rid of the Dome, which would cause war. And the second thing it would be, which is probably very, very important, is that there are some who may be thinking that the Arabs would even consider blowing up their own mosque and blaming it on Israel, which would then force a war without a doubt, causing the bordering nations to come against Israel to fulfill the Psalm 83 war. But if that was the case, the only thing that would do is speed up building the third temple. Either way, in the near future, you will see the third temple being built. Now, as far as the Arabs blowing up their own mosque, let me just let me just show you something. The thought is in their minds. There was a, an article that came up, and I'm going to show it to you here, that showed and depicted, and I'm going to also show a video with some writing here, that the Arabs would think that the Jews blew up their mosque. And obviously, as I said, if that ever happened, it would be immediate war. Millions upon millions of Arabs would rush in to try to wipe out the nation of Israel, and I don't discount that at all. Now let me first read what this article says, and then I'm going to show you the video that the Arabs made about this Jewish temple being rebuilt, and obviously the Dome of the Rock was blown away. Listen to this. An Arab filmmaker produced the shocking video meant to prevent Jews from praying on the Temple Mount. While the intention is to incite hatred, the actual portrayal seems to be an accurate biblical dream of the Jewish people. A recent video posted on YouTube warns Arabs of the danger presented by Jews praying on the Temple Mount, exactly what I've been warning about. A hot topic as of late, Jews have flocked to pray at the Temple Mount, but have been praying to the Muslim rioting and aggression. And it goes on to say, read more about how the Islamic State of Hamas dominate the holy site. And then it goes and shows you the video, which I'm going to show you now. So take a look at this. And uh, like I said, I don't rule it out. There's a possibility they would go that far just to make war against Israel. And all they would be doing is fulfilling prophecy because the Psalm 83 war would commence.
So as I started in the beginning of the video, we're talking about Iran's nuclear quest. I want to get back to that information. First of all, I'm going to show you my warnings, and then we'll get right to the current events. Take a look. So let me show you, for years, I've been warning what was going to happen between Iran and Israel concerning the nuclear talks. Iran has made it very, very clear that they're never going to stop production of the, with those centrifuges to get a hold of a nuclear bomb. And over the six years as Barack Obama has been president, I've told you for the past six years, don't expect anything to happen when it comes to the United States forcing Iran to halt their nuclear request for that bomb. And so every year for the past six years, I continually do what I'm doing now. I'll show you my warnings that I gave you a while back, and then I'll bring you to the current events to show you what I told you six years ago is actually happening now, and it will continue to happen until well, there's a war between Israel and Iran, as we see in Ezekiel chapter 38. Now, on November the 21st of 2013, I'm going to take you to a post called Equiescence. That's my post being quoted from and I'm going to scroll down so you can see what I was alluding to so that you can get this information. So here's the video that I, I gave to you back in 2013. Iran won't stop uranium enrichment. Now I'm just going to show you where you can go for this to listen to what I said. One. Now, in that article, I even gave you a, a YouTube video to just to show you what I was saying was the truth. That the Iranians said that they're not going to stop, and it's carried out ever since 2009. So let me show you one of those videos. Iran's foreign minister, Manachir Mataki, says... All right, so you can go and do the Google and pull up this video if you want. Just go... This one came out of before its news. They took it from my website called Equiescence from November 21st, 2013. But I just wanted to show it to you so that you can understand where I'm coming from. And I'm coming from the knowledge of the Bible, knowing what's going to happen in the future based on what the Lord told us concerning Israel. So, so before I go to the current event, let me show you what I published November 11, 2014 in my YouTube video. And if you want to check that video out, just go to the YouTube and, or Google at YouTube. Put Iran says destroy Israel. All right. Proof of last days. That is my video. And I was talking about what Barack Obama has done in the past and what he is doing currently. He's actually helping Iran and he's not going to do anything. Let me play what I said on November the 11th. Like I did back in 2013, I'm going to stop this video and come up to the more current news because another year has passed. Barack Obama not only hasn't done anything to stop the Iranians from building or getting hold of this nuclear material to turn it into a nuclear bomb to be used against Israel, but he is now, in these latest talks, he's actually helping Iran. He's not slowing them down. He wants to make a deal, which I gave to you a couple of days ago in the video. So you can go to my website, just scroll down to the different dates, and you'll see that video that I placed up there. But let me get to you now the new information. This came out November the 9th, 2014. And here's the title to the head article, Khomeini the only cure for Israel is its annihilation. And of course, that theme of what is being said by the Iranian supreme leader is the exact same theme as we see both in Psalm 83 and in the Ezekiel 38 war. All right, well, now I'm going to take you to another one of my warnings, and this will be the last one. This one was from my post of October the 4th of 2012. Let me scroll down. 
So again, all you have to do if you want to watch this video, just write down the name of the video you see as the cursor is going across the top of the screen. You can watch the whole entire video, but I'm just going to play a portion dealing with this news about Iran and Obama not stopping the Iranian quest for their nuclear bomb. That the attack is going to come, the evil thought will be coming, and uh, they will be alone. Now, I've been telling you over and over again, don't believe what Barack Hussein Obama is saying, that he's got Israel's back, because he certainly does. Only it's got a dagger in it, and he's going like this into their back, into Israel's back. And we see that by his actions. He's trying to divide Israel. He's trying to give the capital away to Israel. He's giving money to the Egyptian army, which are Muslim Brotherhood, who are enemies now of Israel. So, I mean, if you do your study, and you'll see that the actions of the president uh, speak volumes compared to his lip service that he's giving. So, now let's go to another headline to show you Israel is going to be alone, and I'm going to connect Ezekiel chapter 38, this war that will be coming. It says, visiting U.S. congressman, Israel must not put faith in Obama to thwart Iran's nuclear drive. Let me go right to the article for you. <clears throat> now again, if you're new from my, uh, to my site, uh, once you go there, you'll be able to uh, just click those links and uh, read the whole article. And this is uh, Trent Franks. This is the article about him. And this is what he says. This is what the article says. Israel must not trust Barack Obama or President Barack Obama to thwart Iran's nuclear weapons drive, the Republican U.S. congressman said in a visit to Israel Wednesday, savaging Obama's handling of the Iranian crisis and a stark departure from the American political tradition of not attacking the governing administration while on trips abroad. And thank God this guy's speaking speaking out he's speaking out the truth everybody who has been placed in office in the united states their duty is to speak the truth and most of them obviously we're seeing that that's not the case but thank god that uh, trent franks is now speaking in jerusalem at the meeting of the christian zionists trent franks a republican from arizona second district said that if israel does not stop iran obama will not prevent get that, will not prevent Islamic Republic from gaining nuclear weapons, but would merely try to contain the threat. Obama has said repeatedly that he will not allow Iran to obtain nuclear weapons. And so Trent Franks is saying the same thing as I've been saying. Watch the guy's actions. Watch his allegiance. Where is his allegiance going? And it's really tipped to the, the Muslim side. It says this also, I hope I say this the right way, but I am convinced that Israel will not trust other countries to do what they have to do to protect their own security. It's essentially the same thing that I've been saying. Franks said at the press conference, now the Prime Minister of Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel's security must always remain in Israel's hand and I'm completely for that. I understand very clearly that Israel will not be made to walk into a gas chambers silently again. If Iran gains a nuclear weapon, we will need a new calendar in the world. It would change humanity that much, Frank said. Iran will give these weapons to terrorists and the world over and your children and mine will step into the shadow of nuclear terrorism. A month before U.S. elections and on the day of the critical first presidential debate, the congressman harshly attacked Obama, a highly unusual step for a visiting American politician. And according to the tradition of the politics, stop at the water's edge. U.S. politicians generally refrain from partisanism attacks well on the foreign soil. As an American congressman, Franks told the Times of Israel, it breaks my heart to see that the President of the United States reserved more criticism for Israel for building homes in their capital city than does the Iranian, than for the Iranian uh, President Hamad Ahmadinejad for building nuclear weapons, which 
uh, threaten the peace and security. And we see this word peace and security popping up all over the place. And why? Because in uh, Thessalonians, the Lord said in 5.3, when they shall call peace and security, that's when the sudden destruction is going to come. So, man, I'm telling you, prophecy is converging. It is definitely coming together. So, here we go with this peace and security of the entire free world. It is very difficult for me to understand how that could happen. The president misunderstands the equation in that Israel's timeline and their window to act against Iran is different than America's, Frank added. America has come, or some capabilities that Israel doesn't have, and Israel cannot place their security in the hands of Barack Obama. They can't do it. They have to act within their time frame before Iran goes into the zone of immunity that Israel talks about. Frank is a member of the International Israel Alliance of Caucus Federation. So thank God that somebody in Congress is speaking up for Israel. And But we do know this. Even though the Trent Franks is speaking out the way he is, the bottom line is this. We have to go back to what the scripture says. And the scripture says, all the nations will be coming against Israel. That's just the way it's going to be. So we know that Israel is going to have to do whatever they're going to do to Iran to stop that nuclear program. They're going to have to do it alone. And I don't care what Barack Obama has to say. And uh, obviously these other people don't believe uh, Obama as well. All right, so there's more to it. Uh, but I'll let you go to the YouTube channel to listen to it all there. But let me now go to the current events to show you my warnings based on, again, what I know from the scriptures are coming true. November the 24th, 2014. This is out of the Middle East. Negotiators plan to extend Iran nuclear talks by seven months. They're doing exactly what I told you they were going to do. And you can Google Frank Damore on this, Iranian warning, Barack Obama will do nothing, he'll extend. You're going to get a lot of my warnings. But all he is doing continuously is allowing the Iranians to have more time to finish what they have always hoped for, and that was a weapon of mass destruction to use against Israel. Now, on the 11th, I showed you the Iranian leader hasn't changed. And he still wants to wipe out Israel. So what doesn't Barack Obama get? Now, in my opinion, this is one of the reasons why the Obama administration lost uh, control of the House and the Senate. The foreign relations and protecting, protecting Israel, protecting our allies is almost non-existent now with the president. And we're talking about Barack Obama. So take a look at this. It says, ours away from a Monday deadline, and I told you it didn't matter what was going to happen with any deadlines, they would come and go and Iran would still be working on their centrifuges, and that's, my friends, what they're doing. So Monday deadline for completing a new accord to curb Iran's nuclear program. Negotiators plan to extend talks for another seven months, a Western diplomat said. The British Foreign Secretary, Phillips Hammond, told reporters that some significant progress had been made, but it did not provide details. How are you going to get details? I mean, obviously, it's either they stopped them or they didn't. It was just like when Barack Obama went to Syria. Actually, he didn't go there personally, but he left them a message and said, you've crossed the red line if you use these weapons. And we will come after you. Well, that proclamation of a red line, it came and left. And he's doing the same thing with the talks. This man talks hard, but he doesn't swing the bat. So it says he confirmed that the goal was to reach a headline agreement by March 1st and that talks would continue through June. So again, in a nutshell, all you're doing is giving Iran more time for their progression of getting a hold of a bomb to use against Israel. Now, Israel sees what Barack Obama is doing, and that's why I put up the article that uh, I did a couple of days ago showing that the Israelis 
are getting ready. They have to get ready. I've been saying this for the last six years when I heard the talks were going to be headed out to Iran to try to stop them. And Israel is very, very patient, more patient than I thought that they'd ever be at this point. But I'm pretty sure now with another extension of seven months after six years of negotiating that, that the Prime Minister of Israel is going to have to make a move because they're getting very, very close now. They're pumping up those centrifuges and they're getting close to the bomb. So there's going to be action in the Middle East. I can guarantee it. Now look at if you don't believe me, read Ezekiel chapter 38. I've said this a hundred times too. Israel will face Iran. We know that for sure. Ezekiel 38 shows us that Iran is involved in that battle and we know that it's coming and it's coming quicker and quicker and news like this shows us it's just around the corner.